Hey, what do you say, my fellow weekend warriors, backyard grillers, and part-time pitmasters? I'm gonna be smoking up a rack of St. Louis-style spare ribs in my drum smoker, but you could do this in any kind of smoker. Pellet smoker, pellet grill, kettle grill, doesn't really matter. I bought this drum back in December. It's a 55 gallon drum from Gateway Drum Smokers. And there's a lot of other different manufacturers out there. You got Oklahoma Joe's, you got pit barrel cookers, and the list goes on and on. You can even make your own. There's some really nice kits out there if you're more of the DIY person. And what I like about them is number one, they're easy to use. They don't require electricity, so I'm not tethered to an electrical outlet. There's no moving parts that I need to worry about that might break on me. It just uses charcoal and wood. And I can pack this thing up, throw it in the back of the truck, take it camping. I can go down to the park on a weekend. And so I just really love the portability and simplicity of it. And one of the things I really liked about Gateway and some of the other models is they have these adjustable air intakes. Gateway happens to have two, which lets you really dial in that temperature. So if you're in a hurry and you wanna cook hot and fast, you can open up these intakes a little bit and keep that temperature between 275 and 300 degrees. Or if you're in no hurry at all like I am, and I really enjoy those longer cooks. You can dial these down, close them down a little bit, and keep that temperature somewhere between 200 and 250 degrees. A little more traditional low and slow. Now right here, I've installed my own temperature probe hole. It doesn't come with one, and I don't wanna smash my probe wires with a lid. So all I had to do was drill a 7 8 inch hole with a hole saw, and then I installed this half inch UF cable connector and secured it on the backside with a half inch steel lock nut washer. So right here's a look at it from the inside. Nice and simple. It's eventually gonna get covered in grease and smoke. And so I'm not worried about a little air gap. I don't think it's gonna rust. I'll just make sure that I keep it covered when I'm not using it. I store this in my garage anyways. Besides, these ugly drums need those little air leaks to work properly. So no big deal. So to fire one of these up, it's real simple. I fill up my charcoal basket with charcoal. And then I'll take one of these tumbleweed fire starters and I'll put it right underneath in the ashtray, right there. Then I'll give it a light. And once it gets going, I'm gonna drop it down into the pit, just like this. And I'm gonna make sure that that fire starter goes right next to one of those air intakes down there. And make sure that's fully open on both sides. And we're gonna let that charcoal start to burn. We wanna get about a fist sized fire going at the bottom. Then I'll show you what we do with the lid. But while we're waiting for that, let's get these ribs ready. These are St. Louis style spare ribs. Chairman's Reserve Prime Pork. Ooh, never had these before. I just happened to see them in the grocery store, but they look good, nice and meaty. Get them out on the cookie sheet so we can get them seasoned up. Now, rarely ever do I trim the ribs. I like to just keep it simple. This is backyard style. I don't even pull the membrane off the back unless I'm having guests, but otherwise that skin does not bother me. If you wanna take it off, you take it off. Another thing I rarely do because these ribs are nice and wet, I, I rarely use a binder, but today, you know what? I'm in the mood for a little bit of yellow mustard binder. So we'll make sure we get this rubbed down here. Just a light coating. We're gonna get both sides. And then I'm gonna season them with one I haven't used in a long time. It's this Head Country Championship Seasoning as their original. Let's see what's it got in here. Salt, dehydrated vegetables, which is garlic, onion, red bell pepper. It's got sugar, paprika, some other spices, good stuff. So we're gonna put this on both sides. You don't need too much, I'm not going too heavy. Flip this over and get the other side. That looks about right. And so now what we're gonna do, we'll just let these ribs kind of hang out here, take in some fresh air, let that rub set up. I can hear my charcoal crackling over there. I know I got a good size fire, so let's check that out and I'll show you the next steps. So right there, right next to our air intake, it's a nice size fire going right now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take this lid and put this on like this. The exhaust goes opposite of the intakes and we want this fully open right now. What I want to do is bring this up to about 200 degrees, maybe 225 before I start to dial them down. I want to cook at 250 degrees today. And very quickly, we're up to about 225. Didn't take long. 
And so we need to check back these intakes. And we do that by just simply closing these. I'm gonna close them almost three quarters of the way. This one looks a little bit different. I've already done my first mod on this, which is to have a Wi-Fi fan controller. That'll be for another video. I wanna to demonstrate today that you don't need all that stuff. And so we'll close this one here about three quarters of the way. And now is a good time to go ahead and put uh, your wood in. I'm using some apple wood. It does not take a lot. You could very easily over smoke something in here. So I'm just gonna drop these in real quick. go and I'm climbing I'm almost at my 250 once I get there I'll see if I need to adjust anything I might have to close that top exhaust a little bit and then I just want it to sit there for about 10 minutes make sure it's stabilized and then we'll put our ribs in all right we're gonna get them in I'm gonna put them on the back side so right now all of our flame is up front and our exhaust is in the back so this is our cooler zone let me get this lid on. And we're gonna let this go for about an hour before we spritz it. You'll notice we've got this real nice thin blue smoke coming out of here, which is exactly what you want. And one thing I've learned over the past couple months of experimenting with this, the charcoal you use does matter. For example, I used one brand. I'm not gonna say which one it was, but it made the meat taste rancid. It was a real nasty tasting end product. So then I switched to uh, b and and it's night and day difference in flavor. But also if you find this is cooking a little bit too hot and too fast for your liking, you could switch to briquettes, which don't burn as hot. They're gonna create more ash that you have to clean out, but it'll help you stabilize at those lower temperatures as you learn how to use this pit. So hey, we'll be back in about an hour to spritz this. I can't wait. So we are about one hour in. We've been hovering around 255 to 265. Let's get this lid off real quick and see how they look. All right. Nice. Taking on some good color. Our rub is just now starting to get a little dried out. So it's a perfect time to spritz. And this is just a little bit of water and apple cider vinegar. We don't need a whole lot here, just get some on that rub so we don't dry out. And let's get the lid on before our temperature spikes too bad. And we're good to go for another hour. The smoke that's coming out of here is just incredible. That nice apple wood mixed with charcoal. Nice color on those ribs already. Things are good. We'll be back in one more hour to spritz them again and see how they look. We just hit the two hour mark. We're still holding steady around 260. Let's get this lid open real quick and give them another spritz. Look at that. That's pretty. Real nice color. Man, that looks good. Starting to get a little tiny bit of pullback on the bones. Not sure if you can see it yet. But let me get these spritzed. I'm just gonna rotate them here real quick. Like that. Let's get this lid back on. And so I'm guessing in about 45 minutes or so, I can come back out and I'm gonna wrap them in foil for one hour. Only reason I'm doing that is I don't want them to get too smoky and then we'll go from there. So we'll be back in about 45 minutes. All right, we're just at about the three hour mark. Let's get this open. Take a look at these ribs. One of the benefits you get from these drum smokers that I haven't talked about is all the juice drips down on the coals. You get that extra flavor infused in there. That color is absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna get these over on the bench and wrap them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip them meat side down. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit of my spritz over top. Not a whole lot. And that's it, we'll loosely wrap these up. Just like that. We're gonna put them back in the drum smoker for probably about an hour. And then we'll be fixing to cut up some ribs and have a bite. All right, hour number four. I just took the ribs out. They are probe tender. So now I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of sauce and then we'll put them back on for just a couple minutes to help the sauce set up. But let's take a look at how they are. Nice pullback on the bones, but not too much. I like there to still be a little bit of a bite to the meat. So I got a little bit of this bone sucking sauce left. I prefer a tiny bit of sauce. so that I can still taste the smoke and the rub. So we're just gonna 
lightly brush this on. Just like this. And then we'll quickly take them over here, just slide them into the drum. We're just keeping them on the foil to keep that sugary sauce off the grates. Put this lid on, and now I'm gonna open up all the vents. Let's get a little bit of a fire going in there. We'll just give it about 10 minutes, and we'll be ready to cut this up. All right, these are done. 10 more minutes in the gateway drum. Let me slice up a couple here, we'll see how we did. Oh, that is tender. It smells so good. Okay. Very nice pronounced smoke ring. Juicy. You guys see that juice in there? Wow. That side looks good. Let me get a bite of these spare ribs. All right, not bad. About a four hour cook. Let's try it out. Oh my God. That is so good. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you guys wanna see more with this Gateway Drum, check out this video right here from Russ Jones at Smoky Ribs. He did a really nice job going in depth on it and I'll see you over there.